Good morning and welcome to Calvary Presbyterian Church in San Francisco, California. My name is Victor. I am one of the pastors here along with Marcy Glass, our pastor head of staff, and Joanne Lee, associate pastor. Along with Michael Conley and a slew of musicians, we welcome you to this service of worship. Today is Leadership Sunday, which means you will be privileged to meet our new elders and deacons and the returning elders and deacons who will be leading this church in 2021. Elders and deacons, for those of you who don't speak Presbyterian, means board of directors and care team, respectively. There is an online worship bulletin so you can follow along and know exactly who you're looking at all the time. The prayers are there as well as the hymns. That is on our website at calpres.org or pinned in the comments section on YouTube and Facebook. There's also an online offering plate, which I would be fired for not mentioning, available at calpres.org. This is a week of service at Calvary Presbyterian Church. We have the men's Bible study on Monday, seniors on Tuesday, and then the food pantry on Saturday. Welcome to this service. We are glad you're here. Let's worship God. Good morning. I'm Michael Arnold, returning elder for property. Hear now these words from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is God's work and God's righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. She provides food for those who fear her. God is ever mindful of her covenant. God has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of God's hands are faithful and just. All God's precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. She sent redemption to her people. She has commanded her covenant forever. Holy and awesome is God's name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever.
Good morning. I'm John Hoffman, and I'm an incoming deacon. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us away from our selfish concerns to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sin responsibly in the presence of God and of one another. Please join me. Mighty God, surely knowledge of you is the beginning of wisdom, but we want to trust our own knowledge. Lord Jesus, defeat the doubts that trouble us. Eternal God, the scriptures tell us that you spoke to your people through Moses and the prophets, but we doubt that you speak today. Lord Jesus, defeat the doubts that trouble us. Holy God, we hear the stories of Jesus casting out demons, but we doubt you hear our prayers for healing. Lord Jesus, defeat the doubts that trouble us. Forgive us our doubts and teach us with authority that we may proclaim you. Amen. I'm Kay Fujimura, an incoming deacon. Receive now your assurance of pardon. God, who is rich in mercy, hears our prayer. By grace, we are saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. May the Spirit of Almighty God strengthen us from this day, now, and forevermore. Amen. I'm Kat Zagoria, and I'm a new incoming deacon at Calvary. And it is my joy to pass the peace with y'all. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Good morning. I'm Erin King, returning elder for children and family ministries. Today is Leadership Sunday, and our message is about leaders in our world. In the church and in life, Jesus is our leader. He teaches us by example how to live in the world and be his hands and feet to do his work here on earth. I have some special guests with me today who are going to talk about not only adult leaders, but how all you children at home watching can also be leaders in our world. Hi, Wesley and Sahalia. We're talking about leaders today. Do you have a favorite leader, Wesley? I don't know about favorites, but I think you and Dad are great leaders. Oh, you're just saying that. What do you think, um, what qualities do you think make us good leaders? Well, I'm not just saying that because you are responsible and mature and you're able to take care of yourselves and others. I don't know about you, but I think anyone who can do that is would be a great leader. Well, thank you, Wesley. How about Sahalia? Is there someone um, that you look up to as a leader? Yes. Um, even though Wesley is pretty annoying, I still look up to him as a leader. Um, and... I also look up to Kamala Harris as a leader because she always knows the right thing to do and she has br broken limits by being the first female vice president ever. Awesome. So do you have to be an adult to be a leader? No, you don't. I think there are plenty of awesome kids out there who can be really good leaders. You guys are being a really um, great leadership team right now helping me out with the children's message. So do you have a book about children being leaders? Yes, we do. Would you like to read it? Sure. Being a Leader by Robin Nelson. I can be a leader. A good leader is responsible. A good leader follows rules. A good leader is fair. A good leader respects others. 
A good leader cares about others. I can be a leader at school. I can lead my class. So Halia, how can you be a leader at school? I can sing a new song to my class or I can or sit, or lead a song that my teacher likes us to sing. I can lead in a game. Awesome. All right, what's next in our book? I can be a leader at home. I can take care of my sister or brother. Wesley, what other things can you do at home to show leadership? I can do my chores such as brushing my teeth after I've eaten breakfast. And if maybe if you have pets, you can, we have two cats and I have to do some kitty chores. Excellent. Continue, please. I can be a leader in my community. I can help others. So Halia, what are some ways you can help out in your community? I can can stay socially distant from everyone, wear masks, wash hands. That's a really great way to be respectful and also show leadership in your community. Great. And how about Wesley? Do you have other ways you can show leadership in your community? Well, you can clean up a local park or feed people who are hungry. Excellent. Well, you guys are really great leaders, and I hope all the children at home watching have enjoyed our children's message today. So have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Hope you have a nice rest of church.
A reading from the Gospel of Mark. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at, at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a word that the author of Mark's gospel uses over and over again. That word is immediately. English translators, often in an attempt to make his language easier on our ears, leaves the word out, as they do in this passage. But if you read through it in Greek, you would see it. And as you read through Mark's gospel this year, consider that word immediately is providing a drumbeat through this text. Because Mark wants us to know and to make sure we know that time is moving. Time is marching and quickly toward the conclusion of this story. Jesus is marching through the gospel with no time for dilly-dallying. So when you hear Mark say immediately, it should call us back to the moment at hand. It should remind us that following Jesus, becoming people who fish for people, as Victor preached about last week, isn't about something that will happen sometime in the distant future. It's about right now this very moment, immediately. I'll admit that's a challenge for me in the midst of this pandemic. When, we, when I feel like I'm placing all of my better days in the future, when I can gather together with you, when the virus will abate and we've all been vaccinated. And trust me, I do still have great hope for when I can actually preach a, a sermon in a sanctuary that has people in it. But Mark's reminder of immediately pulled me up short this week. Because following Jesus isn't something we get to put on hold. God has things for us to do right now, immediately. What is God wanting from you right now? The newly appointed disciples have left their nets by the shore when immediately they go to Capernaum. That's not a big commute. It's a town very near the shore of Galilee. And the Sabbath arrives and Jesus enters the synagogue and he teaches. And in the middle of his astounding teaching, immediately a man with an unclean spirit appears, interrupting the lesson. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Now we could get hung up on what it means for this man to have an unclean spirit, but we won't because I don't have an explanation exactly. And Jesus does not call his disciples to gather around the bedside and make a diagnosis. Remember what has already happened in the first chapter of the gospel. The heavens were torn apart and the Holy Spirit descended like a dive bombing pigeon until it landed on Jesus. So Jesus, the man with the Holy Spirit, is now a few verses later, immediately, engaging with a man with an unclean, an unholy spirit. The heavens have opened and the battle that is being waged is nothing less than cosmic. From the beginning of Mark's gospel, it is apparent that the demonic, the unclean spirits, are on their way out. They, their hold and authority that they've had in the world is coming to an end. That, my friends, is the beginning of the good news. So this possessed man speaks to Jesus, and notice what he says. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. The first voice in Mark's gospel who proclaims Jesus' identity is God's voice at Jesus' baptism. 
the second voice to proclaim it is an unclean spirit. Even the demonic realm knows and proclaims Jesus' identity. What will become clear to the human characters, or at least some of them, by the end of the gospel is known immediately by the cosmic realm at the very start. Jesus silences the spirit and commands that it leave the man, because when you're possessed by unclean spirits, you are not free to live the life to which you have been called by God. And Jesus' call is to freedom, to wholeness, to new life. The crowds were impressed with Jesus' authority. And the fact that his authority seemed to be so novel and impressive, it makes me wonder if the religious authorities had not been speaking with authority at all. If the religious leaders had been speaking out of both sides of their mouths or had been silent because they were afraid of offending people, the crowd would no, no doubt have been as thirsty for Jesus and his authority as if they were wanderers in the desert. I've been thinking about that authority of Jesus, which on one hand is certainly different categorically from any authority we might have. But on the other hand, I think one of the things that drew the crowds to him, that draws us to him still today, 2,000 years later, is the fact and the way that he spoke clearly and truthfully, no matter the cost to him, no matter who might be offended or upset. Jesus is so clearly grounded in his own self and mission and beliefs that he speaks from a position of deep conviction and authority. I've spent a fair amount of my ministry testifying in state capitals or legislators' offices or our own denomination's general assembly trying to bring the authority of the church to advocate for reproductive justice, for livable wages, for marriage equality, for human rights for people who are gay, lesbian, and transgender. And often, the loudest voice against what I testify about treating every person with dignity, safety, and equality, often that loudest voice was from people speaking from their deeply held Christian religious convictions. They too claimed they were there speaking with authority on behalf of God. Or if you think about the, the mobs that were carrying crosses into the Capitol as they desecrated the halls of the Capitol building, or the prayers that they prayed on video in the rotunda before they then went to try to hunt down legislators. As the Dire Straits song goes, two men say they're Jesus, one of them must be wrong. I'm reminded that working for human rights, for civil rights, for justice, it's a long game, and I will keep at it, trusting that love will win no matter what we hear on the news. We keep working for justice because we hear Mark's urgency immediately, immediately, immediately. We have no time to waste, friends, to share God's love, to protect people and the earth, to make this a safe place for all people to live and flourish. But when there are so many people speaking with authority and saying different things, how do we know who to listen to? Lots of people speak as if God has sent and given them the message directly. Speaking with authority about God's love and mercy desperately matters to the world, but how do we discern authority when the messages are so contradictory? I want to speak with authority and with love, and I don't want to be a jerk. How do we know what to do? what to say. I'm certain there are pastors preaching the mirror image of my sermon this morning, telling their parishioners about the supposed faith leaders like me who are on the wrong side of an issue. How do we discern? In Matthew's gospel, Jesus warns, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. That's how I see healing connected to authority in this passage. What are the fruits of what we say in God's name? Do our words give hope and life to a hurting world? Or do our words wound? Jesus silences the unclean spirit and commands it to leave the man, because when you're possessed by unclean spirits, you are not free to live the life to which you have been called by God. And so the authority with which Jesus speaks serves to bring wholeness and restoration to people and to communities. 
Now, we can't be Jesus, not even on our best days. We cannot heal the unclean the same way he does. Jesus' authority is not ours. We can, however, claim our authority to speak against powers that bind people, that keep them from being free to live the life God is calling them to live. Sometimes those powers are big and seem cosmic, war, systemic violence, behaviors that seem impossible to change. And sometimes those powers are more personal, bullying or addiction or hunger and economic insecurity. We need to claim our authority to speak out and free people from those demons that keep them from a whole and healthy life. Because if we don't do it, false prophets in sheep's clothing will speak in our place, and they won't speak God's word of love. I am grateful to serve with you, a church that takes seriously your call to speak God's love and healing and to speak with authority. You speak with authority when you advocate, when you spend time in prayer and witness, you speak with authority when you serve your neighbors, sometimes without saying a word. You are witness with our ministry partners at food banks, in courtrooms for asylum hearings. It all brings an authority of God's love to people who maybe haven't heard that voice calling them beloved in a while. The world is desperate for good news. It wants to be astounded by the healing authority of the God of love. So how is God calling you to speak with authority? Maybe it involves your words. Maybe it is your ministry of care and presence in people's lives. I invite you to attend the adult education class today at 1130 on Zoom. You can register now at the church website for the Zoom link. In this class, they will be showing a video um, that has recently been made um, that perfectly illustrates one way Calvary is speaking authority with love. I hope you can join us. The way you give your money also gives authority and speaks to what you value. How does your giving speak God's word of love to the world? If you would like to talk about the theology behind our giving, about the ways it speaks our faith into the world, please reach out to me or to Robin Morjikian. It's not about the amount of money given, but the way our gifts combine to speak with authority in a more powerful voice than any of those gifts can do individually. Today also, we are ordaining and installing new elders and deacons to serve with authority on your behalf. The leadership of this church has been pivotal in the behind the scenes work to help the staff adapt and adjust during COVID time. They have been working on reopening plans and delivering groceries and responding to our mission partners whose needs have changed because of the pandemic. We pray over our officers when we install and ordain them. And one of the things we ask for is that God's spirit will be upon them as they serve you. We want them too to be freed, to live full, healthy lives so that they can hear where God is calling them to lead the church. Whether you're an officer or a longtime member or a new member or interested in joining or a child or an occasional person who finds us just online, however you are hearing this today, know this, God has given you authority. And I invite you this week to consider how God is hoping you might use your voice for good in the world. Whatever it is God has called you to do with authority, let's go astound the crowds with the good news of God's love immediately. Amen. Hey, to
Friends, we are called into the Church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling to be disciples and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as elders and deacons. While it was the church-wide nominating committee of Calvary Presbyterian Church that asked you to serve, it is God who calls you. Recognizing the importance of each office, the church ordains those whom God has called in order to assure fulfillment of the primary responsibilities of ordering the governance of the church for elders and providing for ministries of care and compassion in the world for deacons. Hear now these words from 1 Corinthians. There are a variety of gifts, but it is the same spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Representing the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, the session of Calvary now ordains Will Bondurant to the office of elder and to the office of deacon, we now ordain Kay Fujimura, John Hoffman, Kat Zagoria, Phoebe, Phoebe Brockway, who will be the youth deacon, and we install them to active service of their respective boards. The session also installs to active service Michael Arnold, Betsy Dodd, Priscilla Dwyer, Ruth Ann Miller, Ruth Ellen Miller, sorry, and Marion Stanton, who will be with us at a later time. We uh, have previously ordained these uh, above people to the office of elder. And Amy Garant, Leo Gilreath, Jane Hurlbert, and Tony Vanderkamp who have previously been ordained to the office of deacon. Thank you. So to those of you being ordained and installed today, I invite you to answer these questions in a spirit of prayer and willingness to serve. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I do. I do. I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church, universal, and God's word to you? I do. I do. I do. I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and to do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? If so, say, I do. I do. I do. I do. Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? I will. I will. I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? If so, say I will. I will. I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors and work for the reconciliation of the world? I will. I will. I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? I do. I do. Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? I will. I will. I will. For the elders, will you be a faithful ruling elder watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline serving in governing bodies of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will, I will with God's help. For the deacons, 
Will you be a faithful deacon teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will, I will, with, I will God's with God's help. Do we, the members of the church, accept these people as elders and deacons, chosen by God through the voice of the congregation, to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, say we do. We do. We do. We do. We do. Type it in the comments. Do we agree to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? If so, say, we do. We do. We do. We do. Having heard the answers of this faithful lot, I invite everyone watching who has been ordained to outstretch your hands toward your screen. I have a newfound respect for televangelists ever since we've been in sheltering in place. Outstretch your hand to the screen as we pray for the class of 2023. Holy and eternal spirit, we give you thanks for your steadfast faithfulness to us. In every age, you have called leaders to serve you and equipped us with your gifts. Pastors, musicians, elders, deacons, prophets, and helpers of all kinds to build up your church. With Moses, the 70 elders bore the burdens of your people, ministering in the power of the Spirit. Alongside the apostles, the deacons cared for all in need and guarded the community's peace. In the church, we serve together so that your whole people might be equipped for ministry, unified to transform this world for Jesus. For the church in every age, we praise you. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit on Kay, Phoebe, Kat, John, Jane, Amy, Leo, and Tony, that they may be faithful deacons. Give them openness to the Holy Spirit's leading, that they may see and serve wherever there is need. Train them in the school of prayer that they may express your compassion for the poor and for the friendless, the sick, the grieving, and the troubled. Likewise, <clears throat> pour out your Holy Spirit on Will, Priscilla, Mike, Marion, Ruth Ellen, and Betsy, that they may be your faithful elders. Give them sound judgment wisdom and courage to order the life of the church in obedience to your word. Guide Arnold and Joel as our co-moderators. Guide us all in governance, following Christ who came not to be served, but to serve and to sacrifice in order to set others free. Equip us with courage to bear the gospel into the halls of power and to communicate your presence and might among the powerless. And in everything, give us the mind of Christ who did not grasp at greatness, but emptied himself to become a servant of unconditional, selfless love. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. It is so. Amen. In the comments, I hope you will leave a word of thanksgiving, support, or welcome for Calvary's leadership class of 2023. Thank you, everyone. We are so grateful you have accepted this call to serve, and we are looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Trip Mickle, co-chair of the giving team at Calvary Presbyterian. Offering is a time for us to give back to God. As followers of Jesus, we commit to giving our time, talent, and treasure to the church. Please give generously. You can find the offering at calvarypresbyterian.org, or you can mail us a check directly at 2323 Fillmore Street, San Francisco, California, 94109. 
Thank you for supporting Calvary's mission and ministry. Good morning, everyone. I'm Phoebe Brockway, the youth deacon, and I'm here to recite a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for calling leaders to serve, care for, and advise your people. We pray for leaders of the world that they might work for peace and justice. We pray for leaders of the city and country and for those he has called to ordination and installation today. And we pray that we might each hear your call to be servant leaders, helping those who are in need, who are hungry and unhoused, and all those who seek healing and joy. Move us to their sides so that we might be the body of Christ in the world. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our benediction this day comes from the Reverend William Sloan Coffin, who says, May God give you grace to never sell yourself short, the grace to risk something big for something good, and grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but the truth and too small for anything but love. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs>